Okay, grab the one that's really good. Not too late, too late. Your moves are so bad. I know. Your bad, your bad. It was like, you run from the... Uh, we had no choice. The job was all we had. We had a choice. There's still plenty of good cops on the force, and they put their lives on the line every day. Oh, okay. Are we... It's just not like that. Oh, that was a quick cool mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, we're streaming right now. Alright, um, camera, camera on three, try to give me some cool shots, not all of the students at least. Uh, yeah, can you turn audio on there? And ladies and gentlemen, it's been a funny first half here, a weird first half, it's been the, we're going to up 14-7 over the West Coast East Wildcats. Well, let me tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, it's been all Cougars. Uh, the thing that's gone wrong for them is they had two fumbles, and they have uh, been flagged six times for 45 yards. And, and let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, every flag has come out big for them. If not, I think they would have a more commanding lead. But right now, it's everybody knows Cougars 14, and the Wildcats from what's it called East 7. There's a kickoff. The ball is being returned clean. It could be a return to reverse. They fake the reverse. He's got a little bit of room. The 20, and he's met on the 25. He's still on his feet. A nifty little run because the fake uh -oh. taking the reverse. Uh, you know, open him up, don't it? And DJ Field is in the 30. Yeah, it'll be first and 10 at the 30 yard line for the uh, Edinburgh North Cougars. First time they're touching the ball in the second half. Once again, they touched the ball five times, they scored twice. Fumbled twice and punted only once. Once again, it was just the flags and the fumbles killing the Cougars. If not, they should have had at least 21, maybe 28 points in the first half. Pablo, it'll be first and 10. Good field position at the 30 yard line. Yeah, good start as Edmund North faked the reverse. So that made it a few of the guys who opened up a hole in the, re in the coverage team and helped them get down to the 30. Cougars are looking at trips to the right, split left. White side in the backfield. With Rodriguez in the shotgun, white side's on his left hip. He's actually for the ball. It's a high snap. He gives the white side off the right side. He makes a move, fakes out the linebacker, gave him a few more yards. A good strong run of about three. On the three, it'll be second and seven coming up. Pablo, what do you got from halftime, Pablo? I talked to both coaches. I talked to Coach Burkett first for Wesico and asked him, you know, Coach, how are you going to stop this quarterback read option? They're giving you a heavy dose. And he said, tackle better. That's all you got, Coach? All right. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Second and seven coming up. Cougars at the home 33-yard line. Just left split right. Rodriguez in the backfield with white sides. Snap is up. It's a read option, and he keeps it himself. And there's your move. That's right. Great move. And let me tell you, also, I talked to Coach Sign. They started out with an Espinosa at quarterback and ended up with Rodriguez. What happened was Espinosa is the one that comes to the football. He's a young kid, younger kid, and he doesn't know. You know, once you're in the grasp, once you're going to get tackled, you don't need to continue to fight. That's when the ball gets flung out. And that's why they were playing. All right, they needed seven. They picked up 11, so we're going to move those chains. Good call, don't it? They got tripped right, split left. Rodriguez on the shotgun formation with white sides on his left hip. If you're Wetzico, you're going strong left. Snap is up. It's going to be another read option. He keeps it himself, and there's your adjustment right there twice in a row. I see the adjustment twice in a row, don't it? The last one, the quarterback made a move. This time, he sealed the outside and it lost it too. He lost it too. It'll be second and 12 coming up for the Cougar. Ball now at their own 42 yard line after they had a first and 10 at the 44. Lost of two. It'll be second and 12 coming up. Ball at their own 42. We're about 10 20 and counting left in the third quarter. It's Edward North Cougars 14. What's it going East Wildcat 7. I expect Edward North Cougars to give a steady dose more often of with white sides and the quarterback due to the adjustment. And there it is, white sides again off the right side and up the center off the right guard. Uh, ball was down. Probably down. Yeah, we'll see where they're cutting him down. They're cutting him down. A giant hole and a solid run of them. They needed what? They, they needed need a couple. They needed need a couple. Yeah. And they're going to move those chains. chains. Need a 12, picked up about 15, so it's going to be first and 10. And quickly, after uh, five plays, it's going to be the Cougars on the what's it called, east side of the field, and that is at the 43 yard line first and 10 for the Cougars we're under 10 minutes left in the third quarter Paul, we played less than one hour we took care of that first half Hopefully mostly runs time. I got something for you tell me uh, here in a minute when I talk to you about asking uh, West Coast coach how the rain is affecting their game plan 
in the shotgun formation. They're going to hand it off to another tailback on white sides. Going down the left side, maybe a gain of three. I asked Coach Paquette over there, what's it called? I said, Coach, you know, you were trying to get the ball to your big more Marone. How does this how does this rain affect your passing? He said, we don't throw the ball. Okay. Thank you, sir. Because you could have fooled me. I know you're throwing about ten times, but either he was upset or he just demanded a few words. Not sure. Maybe both. All right. So it's going to be up three yards. It'll be second. And seven coming up. Quickly, we're about under nine minutes left in the third quarter. Okay, Rodriguez, the shotgun. He's got two backs. One of them is more of a fullback in front, more of a blocking back. White side to the behind him in the tailback. Comes a pass. Deep. It's going to be a run of some sort. He has out to white sides. Ooh. And he is met on the second level by the linebackers. They needed a eight, and they only got two, so it's going to be about third and six. Third and six coming up for the Cougars, 840 and counting. That's the third quarter. They're at the 38 yard line of the West Coast East. Wildcats, Pablo, two down territory? I don't know, don't it depends. Uh, how many how yards you get in? Let's see what we get on this play. All right. Don't be Ed McBella. Earlier today, earlier tonight, went for it on fourth and 18 and didn't get it. And turned over the ball. Don't do that. Trips right foot left. It's going to be a pass. He's got man to man down the sideline. He's got to beat if he can make the catch. He underthrew him. He had a, he had a very a sprinting Michael Cantu down the left side all alone, and the ball was underthrown. He did have a step on the defender, and it's going to be fourth and fourth and five, Paulo. So looks like they're going to go for it. Okay, I go the hard count at least, Paulo. I, I do the hard count. I get the play out early so you can set them up for the hard count. If it doesn't work, you get you get everybody set up for a play. All right, here we go. It's going to be 8-11 left in the third quarter. It's still Edinburgh North Cougars 14. First possession on the second half and the Westaco East Wildcat seven timeout being called timeout. by they must not like what they saw I guarantee well I don't guarantee you but I believe they were going to pass they saw some different coverage by Westaco uh, they, well, they got, probably got some guys in some areas they thought were going to be avoided by the uh, the coverage you go first one and then I'll go next all right we do need to say hello to a couple guys down there the guys in the pinstripes uh, it depends what side you're on they can be the hero or the zero we got to say well there's a good screen of the rain we got to call out our referees here referee it's Butch Cooley our umpires Umberto Zavila headlineman John Cardenas line judge Danny Pulido and our back judge Joe Morales doing a great job uh, and we're, we're just glad we caught them up. How about watching the rain? Let's tell the people that are bringing you the action, and then you'll see later with Catch TV. That is Myra Alvarado, a senior. Adrian Cuellar, a junior. Felicia Herrera, a sophomore. Nina, Nina Martinez, a, a junior. Miguel Nuno Gutierrez, a junior. Uh, Daraila Rios, a sophomore. Michael Russell, a junior. Victoria Salcera, a junior. Leroy Torres, a senior. Uh, Harris Esparza, Jesus Lozano, and also Julio Camacho, Rick, hey. Rick, Rick Ramirez, Michelle Rotiaga, <laughs> Julio, Alex Garza, Daniel Ramirez, and Martin Torres. Here's your fourth down play. It's going to be White Sides right up the gut. He needed five, and he got about four and a half. I don't think he got it, don't it? No, he's going to be short one yard. He's calling him down at the 34. He needed to get to the 33. So, we're waiting for the official call and it is going to go the other way so it'll be a timeout on the field because they're changing sides and it's going to be they held them on downs and it'll be first and 10 ball at the 34 they needed to get to the 33 so it'll be first and 10 for Westaco East Wildcats. Well I was looking and I, I figured out very quickly what the adjustment is they widened out one of the linebackers uh, now all that does is opens up the middle to white side and that's predicted I would expect they give a heavier dose of white side they did the problem was they didn't get a first down. They, they, they took four minutes off the clock, so it's eight minutes left in the third quarter. It's still Edmund North Cougar 14. Wildcats for what's it called? E7. Morone gets the ball in space on the left side and busts it outside. Clearly, he's quite a load as he stiff arms the Cougar defender, but nine yards later. Don't it? Ten yards, I think, if they're going to call it. They do it at the 33. Takes it all the way to the 44, so they're going to... Thanks for waiting for me, brother. <laughs> All right, we're going to move the chains for the first time on the Westaco East side of the field. It's only the first position. We're at 7.55, and I think they're going to know that he's... 
He went out of bounds. First and ten. Here we go. Ball at the 45-yard line. Strong left view of the Cougars. They have a tackle playing tight end position, and that's really for blocking purposes. As the Cougar defense just so warm, there was a dive off the left side, and he was met at the line by two Cougar defenders. Nothing doing on that run. Maybe a loss of half a yard. Yeah, putting it right back at the same spot. So it'll be second and ten coming up. Pablo, 7:35, and counting. Pablo Cougars. I mean, they they, they held them on down. Other than that, they, it's been their way of moving the ball. They've only put it once on that long. I mean, if you're coach sign, you might so be Mario saying, thinking, Get us get it. Is. Right about that. And if you work with Donut, Salinas, you're thinking, Get us get, get, get it. Is. Uh, if you work with Rick and Julio, <laughs> get it. No, here we go. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, we couldn't finish. They run the off the left side. Marone is still on his feet. He was met, and the pile is still moving after contact. Give him 10 more yards. 12, 13 more yards. So they're going to move those chains. They needed 10, and he picked up 23 on the play. Ball all the way down to the Cougar. 33-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Wetsuko East. Once again, third quarter, we just started. Cougars had the ball first in the third quarter, and they went all the way down to the uh, What's it called? East 43, 44. They used to get to the 43. They turned the ball over, and the uh, Wildcats pick up their first first down in the third quarter. He's Wesico giving the Cougars a steady diet of sweet outside run by Lupe Moron as he is quite a load, and he's got some speed. This time, right at the gut, as Moron makes a move, he was stymied at the line, makes a very quick move to his left, cuts back left, cuts back up the field, and another run of about seven. Yards. Pablo, where, where, where was this? Where was this running? Half? You know, at first half they try to give, they try to split him out, they try to throw him the ball. And now you got the rain, you got to win football. They said, you know what? We're just going to put him back in the backfield. Put his hand in the ball instead of throwing the ball. Right. Defense better just quickly. It's a second and three coming up. Ball at the 26 yard line. All right, John, quarterback sneak. They needed about three and a very a quick call. Oh, oh, flags. Flag, not sure what it is, but. That many flags, it might be a face mask. I don't know. Depending on the flags, it was a first down run by the quarterback, uh, Flores, I mean, uh, Rivas. But we, there's another one? There's probably the rest of their flags, and backup flag, and every flag. We got five flags. Personal foul. Face mask. You must be a former referee, don't it? I mean, when you see that many, I mean, it, it's obvious somebody, they all saw the same thing. And it's going to be half the distance to the goal line. So one more time, they're going to move those chains and drop them chains. It'll be first and go from the 10-yard line for Westlake East. It is 6.03 and counting left under six minutes. And it's uh, Edinburgh North Cougars 14, Westlake East 7, but they're knocking on the door. Twins left, strong right. It's a pitch to Maroon. It's a tries to get outside he's got one man to beat and he runs him over and they're gonna mark him out at the one Woo, that boy Maroon can run where was this the whole first half like I said I, they tried to give him the, the ball out in space uh, but for the weather they now gave it they're now just handing the ball and I'll tell you what it's working so you credit to both coaches for making some adjustments they didn't give him a breather he was a little gimpy this time they have uh, Cervantes in the backfield. No need for the fact that it's a quarterback sneak. Rivas. Touchdown, Wildcats. Quarterback sneak around the gut. Pablo so quickly. Uh, what's the call? He's come back and answered the door. They're only taking about not even three minutes off the clock. Uh, the Cougars did have answer the door. Or answer the call. He can answer the door, too. They answered everything. They, they answered. They made it look easy, Pablo. Yes. I, mean, I mean, that's all there is to it. Not even three minutes. Minutes and maybe eight plays at the most, and uh, they took it right down. Uh, they got it at the 44 yard line, they went easily 56 yards. Here we go, extra point now. And we have the snap, it's a bad snap. Give credit to the holder for uh, oh, I got a flag. Yeah, they ran into the kicker and the holder as not good for the Cougars. And I talked to Coach no. Sines at halftime about these flags. Said, was, it, was it a fumble? No, because it, it, it doesn't matter if it hits the ground, he's still got to give him a chance to kick. There it is. Personal. Yeah, they roughed the kicker, and that's not good. I talked to Coach Sines at halftime when they came out. Coach Sines, these penalties have got to be killing you. And I'll just say his response, I can't I can't say it on the record. I'm going to tell you very upset about it. He acknowledged that it's hurting them, don't it? And they, they, should, they should be able to buy a few more, yes. but they're not. And so here we go, yet another another penalty. This is a costly one. Don't be kicking from the 45? That's right. So this time they can do that little short kick. Why not? 
Unfortunately, when someone on the kicking team is hurt, we wish him luck. As uh, Edmund North, his coach was on the field, but he was there because of the guy that was injured once again. He wasn't there to argue the call or anything, but he was there to check on his player that was down. And you see this guy running with the coach was doing on the field. Nevertheless, it's going to be a uh, extra point good by the Wildcats. We're tied at 14, 546 left. Once again, just a few just joining us. It's been uh, it had been all through the football until the last three minutes of this ball game. The uh, Westerco East Wildcats have tied it. Some adjustment was done by the offense on the Westerco side of the field at halftime. They came out and it took maybe seven plays to get into the end zone quickly to make it 14 14. So with 5.46 left here in Denver Catch Stadium, I'm doing it for the small operator, but right. We have a new ball game. It is now. Westerco East 14, Edinburgh North Cougars 14, and it's going to be the second time that the Cougars will be touching the ball. Yeah, just like that, 14 14. Great addition. Yes, sir. The, we're going to start. the Cougars is hurting them. The Cougars are really being uh, hurting themselves. But give credit to Westerco for making their offensive adjustment instead of giving, trying to get the ball to Moron, Moron out of space, just handing the ball. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, he's quite an athlete. Clearly, he's got some speed. And some size and that was that Marone uh, you know that was 85 percent all Marone on that drive yeah and they t and they, they that's one thing they told me a few people I talked to and they said hey watch that running back it's gonna be hard for the Cougar and they, they, they just showed me what they were talking about on um, this last drive and they don't took only three minutes but then again Pablo you gave my 56 yard uh, field a short field to go you're right about that. The field position does not help when you got Gardner gets an effort like Marone and what's it going? This time the kick is very high and short. It's going to hit the canvas, and it is fielded cleanly by Ed McNorth. And woo, again, that's what I thought. It's a good time for those short kicks. But this time, I mean, nobody kicked it out of bounds. Yeah. And so a great time for a short kick, which negates your returners. And Edmund North has the ball on the 16. Yeah, they're going to we're going to spot the ball here, Paulo. Yeah. Got, and then he's spotting it at the 17 yard line. So it's going to be first and 10 for Edmund North Cougars. And it's got a 541 left in the third quarter. We're tied up at 14. That is Edmund North and Westaco East Wildcats. Uh, they're starting at their own 17, Pablo. <laughs> And the field position in them uh, after the, the first quarter, the first half, it has now gone to the <coughs> side of the field. So going to double twins with Rodriguez with the shotgun. This time read option. You're going to keep himself and go right up the gut. A great play. Donated that was a gaping hole, and again, you, the Westaco has exposed themselves to be vulnerable right up the middle with their adjustments by widening out that linebacker. They made themselves vulnerable at the middle, and apparently, now from the corner for Cougars has seen that and they're exposing that. They need a 10, they picked up 15, so we're gonna move those chains. 5.30 left in the third, we're tied up at 14, that's the end of the 14. What's it go east? Wildcats 14. So the chess match begins and continues as both teams make adjustments and the Cougars this time quarterback keep it right up the middle a great lead block by Whiteside I'm not sure the tailback was but a great lead block off the linebacker and a nice quarterback keep it right the gut for a game of six six yards on the place so it'll be second and four coming up a Cougar a, a ball yes sir they got to answer the call, man, because momentum just went so quickly to this side of the field. I'll tell you what, probably uh, off of the coordinator has been doing a great job because the, the inside the inside run is, is exposed by virtue of the adjustments of Wetzico, and they're really hitting him up the middle right now. Oh, a bad snap. The ball was mishandled. He's going to try to get something out of it, and that was Christian Espinosa going in. The ball hit him right square in the hands, and just like that, Christian Espinosa is out, and Rodriguez is back in. Wow, I mean, should have could have gotten rid of it, I would think. Uh, Vela ball at the Sherry 30. It's fourth down, though. Oh, I think that's a little update from uh, Sherryland. It's Vela with the ball at the Sherryland 30 yard line. It's fourth down coming up. So Rodriguez back in at the helm. With white size. They got twins left, twins right. And it's going to be a read option, play action pass. He got a man open in the middle, and he's going to get hit. We saw the hit coming as it dislodged the ball. It was a clean hit. It was not a dirty play. It was definitely a hard hit. 
Uh, we had a, a slot receiver came in the middle and a post route, but the safety timed it just right. I saw him timing it. He hit him just as the ball arrived. It was a clean hit and called that an incomplete pass. And you just set up for something like that, Paul. That's the sad part about it. He was open, but he was kind of full speed, going full speed, and you have somebody waiting for you, just timing the hit, just waiting for you to touch the ball and for, for him to hit you. So uh, he just, he's halfway up. He's on his own uh, so far, but he got hit. I mean, that please he's going to be down for a while. The he got hit in his midsection. That's right. Some in the rib area, maybe. Knock his air out, maybe even an injury to the midsection. But uh, thank God for modern day rules, don't it? Because had this been 20 years ago, actually, had this been 30 years ago, and they had number seven in, in the, down there, the Bobcats, it may have been a worse hit. But those rules are designed, obviously, to protect the players, don't it? Uh, don't go for the head. Uh, go for the midsection, hit with your shoulder as opposed to your helmet to helmet. And that's good because uh, it, it negates a lot of injuries. It could have been a lot worse. Yes, right. All right, we're down to 357. It could be fast to stop the clock. It is still the end of the 14. That's the second time they touched the ball, Pablo. They picked up only one first down after the other uh, drives. Uh, they were picking up a bunch of first downs every time. They picked up 12, as a matter of fact, in the first half. They picked up one on their first drive, one on their second drive, and they're about to give the ball back to what's it East. Wildcats with 357 left in the third quarter. We got an update, Donut. Edinburgh, Bella, 17. Sherland, 14. Midway in the third quarter. Wow. Got a good game over there. Good we got a good game off. here. Once again, it's an update. It's the Robert Bella, 17, and the Sherland Rattlers, 14. Yes, wow. And he's on his feet. Uh, we're so glad Angel bought on. He's able to walk off on his own power. We hope he's okay. And looks like the Cougars are in punny formation as it is fourth and very long in their own territory. Yeah, and it is 6-17-14. Robert Bella over Sherry Land with 6-14 left in the third quarter. You got plenty of time. It's a low knuckleball. It's going to go out of bounds off the, off the inside of his foot. We're going to call that a, a maybe a 19-yard punt. Not good for the Cougars. That's going to hurt as that gives 50 Mexico yards in midfield. Good field position, Pablo. Very good if you're Wetsico, uh, because they only got to go half the length of the field. And Wetsico's, Wetsico didn't mind that punt at all. All right, so it's going to be the second time they're getting the ball here, Pablo. And the first time they did, they went uh, 40, I mean, I'm sorry, 56 yards to put seven points on the board to tie the game at 14. Then they had 15 yards on their kickoff, so they started off by pinning the Cougars back on their own side of the field. Here we go, first and 10. Twins right, hand up to Marone right up the gut. And I'll tell you what, Tony, he was met at the line by a linebacker and carried him five yards. Yeah, second and five, ball at the 45. And we're down to 341 and counting left in the third quarter, ladies and gentlemen. We're at Denver Cat Stadium. I'm Doris Salinas. To my right, Paul Osbury, of course, bringing the action. It's Cat TV 17, KTS Channel 17, and ValleyCentral.com. A quick, uh, this time a quarterback sneak, sneak right up the gut as Rivetta rebounds. No okay, yeah. now we got a whistle. Okay, somehow. <laughs> Stayed on his feet. I thought more forward momentum, all that stuff stopped. Bottom line, where there's a pile of bodies kept moving around. All right, well, I'm, I'm making a right. call. You better be careful on Keen on number seven on this play. And better be careful. Cougar team is alive for the hard count. Okay. They've been caught and almost caught many times tonight. All right, it's going to be third. And call it three coming up. We're under three minutes left. It is what's it go East at the 43 yard line of the Cougars. Rone on the sweep cuts it back. What a, what a runner. He's still on his feet he got down the sideline and they needed three and they got about 20 <laughs> so they're gonna move those chains we got a flag on the field though i'll Hold tell on. you what more if, uh, the cougars have found themselves in a hole trying to deal with marone i don't know what took the west coast coaches so long to figure out how to get their ball to foul face mask mm, cougars and they're gonna tack on another 15 and that is really going to put the Cougars in the bind. <laughs> that, that hurts if you try to stop it alone. Now you get 50 more yards. Yeah. 
Hey, Paulo, they've been flagged twice in the second half, and both have been 15 yarder and both have been very, I'm very impressed by both coaches, don't it? The Westlake coaches, what they're doing is they're running to the to the twin side, and what the twins does, that opens up the defense. It gives them room to run into that side. Very clever defense. And they're going to move those chains. Sorry, clever offense, by the way. I'm sorry. That's the third first down in the second half. They only got one. That's all they needed in the first. In the uh, first drive, they have two now on this drive. And it's first and 10 ball at the 14-yard line. And this time it's going to be another sweep to the left. Oh, oh wow. this time you got wow. tremendous wow. penetration. Ball is down. There was a fumble, but they say the ground. Do we have a replay? Oh, now a flag. That's a late. Adrian Ortiz late flag. flying in for the Cougars as he just darted in and disrupted what was going to be a sweep. A little flag about 30 seconds after the flag. I wonder who it's going to be on. Oh, yes. Unsportsmanlike. Hitting with experience. Uh, hit him with the crown on the helmet, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And that has got to be driving Coach Sines, the head coach for the Cougars, crazy. Now, what drives him crazy is that he took about, I guess, 30 seconds after the coaches got on him. He decided to throw the flag. That was a very late flag. Well, as a result, they're going to go half the distance, and they're going to move those chains and drop them chains. All right, it'll be first and go, and the ball's going to be spotted at the uh, nine-yard line. Cougar defense. Here we go. Cougar defense came alive on that play, but they fell back to sleep on the penalty. They're doing all they can to slow down Jerome, who is not on the field. They're giving him a breather. And we have a bunch of people in the And they need to restart the play clock. <laughs> okay, this time you have Navarro in the backfield alongside Angel Flores. As you're giving Marone a break, apparently, and the Cougars appreciate that as well. Hey, stay over there, Mr. Marone. Thank you very much. And they break the huddle, and then in fact, it's the same formation. They've been given a steady dose of twins left. This time, I formation. Motion takes it to trips, and it's a sweep. And they hand it off to their tailback. As he goes outside, I believe that was Alex Cervantes. Picked up four yards. to the left. Picked up four, picked up five. Ball down at the four-yard line. It'll be first. Second and goal for the Westlake East Wildcats. And they'll be at the four-yard line. Yep. Second and goal from the four. Ball no update. Uh, Sherry Land now 21. Uh, Robert Bella 17 with 522. It took him only a minute to go get into to the end zone. Yeah, that's a quick score. It looks like they got a good game. 60 yard there. run. We had a 60 yard run. Woo. Thanks for that update, Donut. We got a good game here, too. And if you're the Cougars, you got strong right. And they've been doing a heavy dose of running. There's a sweep. And he cuts it back. And he got one man to beat. He's down. They're coming him down on the one foot line. Third and one foot. All right, I think that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter. We'll wait to see if Mexico East wants to run a play. They don't have to. We have 22-20 left in the third quarter, and they have 25 left on the play clock. We'll wait and see. They're going to go quick. Cervantes, this time quarterback sneak, and he's got enough. We got flagged. I think they moved. Yeah, they didn't get set. Is that what you're saying, don't you? Yeah. I don't think that was it. Let's wait. That's going to be a big call here. Quarterback sneak if the play holds for a touchdown, but I'm sure the refs are going to call it back because nobody's worried about calling touchdowns. No, it's offside to Cougars. It'll be declined, so it'll be declined. Touchdown, Wildcats! So with 13 seconds left, they've touched the ball twice. They've gone uh, 50 yards. They've gone 56 yards. Short fields. Uh, defense going to be getting tired, Paolo. They, they haven't left the, the, uh, the field in the third quarter but only the four minutes that the uh, Cougars held it for on their first drive. Other than that, it's been the defense on the field. So with uh, 13 seconds left, it is now. A little trickery. Point after. A little trickery. If they adjust, Edward North is coming for the block from the left side. Give credit to Wessico for adjusting. It's a bad snap. A good hold. The kick is. And the kick is good. Excellent Wildcat. As they have their backup kicker, apparently, on that rubbing the kicker ball. Their uh, starting kicker was hurt. They bring in their additional kicker, which is Ubaldo. I'm sorry, 
Emilio Tamez coming in for the kicking duties and extra point. Bottle, they didn't answer the call after they, they, they scored on him. They came back and scored on him again. So a big test coming here for the offense. They were doing good, again, driving, but that bad snap took them back to where, you know, it was a could have thrown it away. He didn't. It, it made him punt. It wasn't a good punt at all. They, they only had 50 yards to go. So the field position has been at their own 44 and at the 50-yard line. That is for Westlake East. Compared to the Enberg North uh, Cougars, they started at their 15. And I think the other time they started around the 17-yard line. So it's been all Westlake East on the second half when it was all Enberg North but with mistakes in the first half. So we'll wait and see what's going to happen. For right now, it is now the Westaco East Wildcats 21 and the Edinburgh North Cougars 14. Shit. Right about that, you know, right that one hurt. The domino effect. You have a, you have offense get stopped. You have a bad punt. You have field, you have some penalties. Next thing you know, you get them close to the end zone, and a good team like Westco is going to take it. In. They've been flagged three times, and all three have been for 15 yards. One of them only went eight yards because they went half the distance. If not, they would have done the whole 15. And the kick is up. It is another short kick. It's going to hit the ground. Fair caught. He's doing what the coaches told him to do. Even though he had plenty of room, fair caught by John Mendoza. And the crew going to take, off, take over the 20. Yeah, they got 80 yards to go. Once again, they did go 95, Paulo, uh, the, the last time they, they had to. So, I mean, it's not like if they can't. But, uh, you know, like, like we're talking about, the momentum has been all what's to go east in the second half. Right about that, Donut. Good call. Momentum, momentum has shifted. Let's see what Edward North does. As the phone is ringing, or, or the door, is the door? Yeah. They're going to answer the door? I hope they answer it. Let's see if they answer the call. And as Edward North breaks the huddle, and they have tripped right, split left. If you're Wesico, you're looking at strong left. Quarterback Rodriguez in the shotgun with white sides. As here comes the read option, right up the gut. White side bounces it out to the right, and he's going down the sideline. And he gets a hit and stays on his feet. And he's still on his feet. Oh, my gosh. What a run. The crowd is on, the on their feet. That's Whiteside broke about five tackles down the run. 30 yards. 30 yards on the run all the way down to midfield. So it'll be first and 10. Uh-oh, is he down? <laughs> Look at the replay. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Rick. Look at that. Stays in bounds. Breaks two, three, four. And a fifth tackle takes him down. And they're going to... Move those chains. We're going to move them after a 30-yard run by Whiteside. So it's going to be first and 10, and the ball will be set right at midfield. And we have a pause in the game. Looks like someone down on the other sideline. And while we pause, I was, let me just continue on the conversation. We're talking to Coach Signs. You know, he said, he said, we need to be physical. We need to play hard. He said, a championship team will play better than this. All right, and Paul, this happened in the last play of the third quarter. We're going to go to the fourth quarter here. And uh, Edward North, this is the third time they touched the ball in the second half. On the other hand, the uh, Washington East has touched twice. They've scored twice. And uh, they've only gone to a uh, short field of 56 and a short field of 50 yards. So, uh, walking on the field on his, on his own, so that's a good thing. He's definitely good tough, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, it's good. We're gonna have to change, change sides here, ladies and gentlemen. We got 12 minutes left. First, first ever 6A district game being played at Edinburgh Cat Stadium right now. It is the Westaco East Wildcats 21, Edinburgh North Cougars. 14, but they just did go 30 yards on the first play of, of this uh, drive, Pablo. Okay. We have a new tail back in there. Can't tell who it is, but we have Rodriguez in the shotgun. You got split left, twin trips to the right. Here, Wesico, it's strong left. Step is up. It is going to be a read option. He keeps it himself and goes what well, should have been off the left tackle. He cuts back inside. Nothing doing as a linebacker took care of that. Gain of one. Gain of one. It'll be second and nine coming up once again. In case you're just joining us, it is uh, Team Donut and Ball coming to you live from Edinburgh Cat Stadium. We're down to 1140 left in this ball game. It's still Edinburgh North Cougars. 14, Westaco East Wildcats. 21. Just right split left. Rodriguez back in there. And a shotgun, it's a mishandled snap, and he just basically he just falls on it. Call that, call that technically a sack for Wetzico, but bottom line is it's a loss of six. 
I have another update here, Donut. Looks like Sherilyn's really putting it on, on Bella. Sherilyn 27, Bella 17, and that's because Sherilyn has missed an extra point. Bella's down 10 points to see if they can take advantage of that. All right, here we go. It's going to be third and 15 coming up with the Cougars. Trips right to the left. Rodriguez in the shotgun. Whiteside back in the field. It's going to be a pass. He's got plenty of time. He's got a man open on the sideline, and he hits Justin Gemba. As he was just waiting for the ball, they needed 15, they got 10, it's going to be 35. Fourth and five. Fourth and five. Thank you, sir. Fourth and five coming up out of a big play. Big play. What are you going to do, boys? Well, you went for it last time, and you came up one yard short, gave him the ball on a short field of only 56 <laughs> yards, and uh, they went and scored quickly. So this time, you're looking at giving them a short field of only 55 yards if you don't make it. On that last play, Rodriguez, the quarterback, had all kinds of time, surveyed the field and hit the open man who was open in the flats. Flats is the short side uh, on either side of the ball. Short shotgun trips right foot left. The ball is up. It's going to be a pass. Looks like it's going to be a screen up the middle. And oh my God, referee! And the referee gets credit for half a tackle. It certainly is not his fault. He had one man to beat, and he would have been gone. But the referee, of course, it was an accident, don't it? But the referee got in the way. What could have been a touchdown turned into a turnover. All right, they're going to turn it on downs one more time. Second time they do that. They did that on their second possession, and I mean on their first possession, and on their third possession. So it's going to be now the third time that the let's go East uh, get the ball. And now again they have only 56 yards to go. Pablo, with 10 minutes left, defense better. I mean, you got right here. You got to turn it up a notch. Right? And at this point in the fourth quarter, you don't need to be down two scores. As they got Marone in the backfield, I'm sure Cougars are unhappy to see that. They've been giving a steady dose of sweep, and there it is, another sweep as he just bounces off. There you go. That's how you tackle him. You said that earlier. What happens is if you go up high on a big running back like Marone, you're going to bounce off him. What you have to do is, unfortunately, you have to hit him down low, and that's exactly what happened by the corner. A great tackle. What could have been a big run ended up to be a loss of one. Thank you, Loss of one. Second and 11, and that's the only way you're going to bring him down, or at least – you know, from you know him running over you or getting more yards after you hit him. And Marone lowered his head. I'll tell you what, if he went up high, it was going to be a collision. Give credit to Marone for a tough run. This time they run around the gut. As the Cougars have, have heard, maybe they heard my conversation with the West Coast East coach about, do you throw the ball? No, we don't throw. So apparently the Cougars have just stunned it inward and have just absolutely taken care of the run. And great adjustment by Coach We got a flag. We got a flag. Let's see what the flag is. As we hear some rock and roll in the background. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ref talking about it. Here we go. Holding. There you go. Decline. Oh, they give him second down again. They want to back him up. Well, that's going to be a big penalty. So uh, I would back him up as well. Instead of a fourth and eleven. Third and eleven. I'm sorry, third and eleven. A fourth and eleven. You have a third and second. I'm sorry, second right. A ten-yard penalty. Don't I think they should take? Okay. I it could call by the coaches. Okay. So, okay, so instead of it being third and eleven, it's going to be second and twenty-one coming up. Well, once it go east, once again, the most important thing is the clock. We're down to ten minutes left in this ball game. Remember the last time that happened, they had him on a third and they made him punt. So, here we go. Twins. The snap is up. It's a quarterback read option. He goes right at the gut. He is untouched. As he goes, they needed about 21 and they got about 15. Third and six or so coming up. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Once again, it's the big play that, you know, what's it going is coming up with when, uh, when the defenders come through. But still, they have a third and a long six coming up. And we're down to 935 and counting left in this ball game. It's what's it going with a big third and six coming up. All at their own 48-yard line. Pablo, two down territory? I don't know. At this point, and usually they got to, you know, they want to wait and see. Probably want to wait and see if they can get a little closer. This time they have Marone split out. They got backfield totally vacated. Trips left, split right. As Rivas throws out, he can keep it or throw it. He hits his man open on the sideline. 
a, a, the receiver runs a 10 yard out a good real nifty play a good grab a toss by Rojas and they're going to move those chains they needed 6 he picked up about 13 yards on the play so it's going to be 1st and 10 Westaco East big first down being picked up there After that, to me the main thing was that big uh, uh, what was it 15 yard run from 2nd uh, and 21 made it a, a, a very you know uh, Good uh, chance of getting a, a first down on third down to make it a third and six, and they picked up 13. So it's first and 10 for well, Westaco East. We're under nine minutes left in the ball game. It's Westaco East 21, Edinburgh North Cougars 14. We have Marone in the backfield, three running backs. This has usually been a steady diet of of a sweep or a run to the outside as the coach. They broke the huddle with nine seconds left in the play clock. Let's go East Coach noticing that and calling the timeout before they get negated at the late game. All right, so it's going to be first and 10 when we come back to action here right now. Uh, it says, they tell me, Pablo, Sabercats falling apart. They went three and out. So it's going to be sharing that ball once again. And they're already up 27 to 17. Bella getting all they can handle over there in Sherland. Same for Edinburgh North Cougars as they're down 21 14, don't it? Uh, good job, great job by the offensive coordinator because they've given a steady dose of run, run, run. And then they have extra backs in the backfield. They move the pocket. He's got plenty of time. He can either keep it or throw it. And he had a man open on the 10 yard out. Uh, 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 good play. A good grab, a good toss by Rivas to Rojas for a, a, a important first down if you're Wessico. All right, so it's going to be 8.41 left. It is first and 10 ball on the Cougar side of the field at the 39-yard line. And, uh, I mean, bottom line, Paulo, is uh, defense has come up big. They've done it before. Okay, the twin to the right. Big man Moron in the backfield as they hand it right up the gut as everybody goes. They're calling a great game. Everybody thought Moron was running the outside, but it was a quick drive up the middle. What, for how far, don't it? We got a flag. I think it'll be holding. It's a real good play call in my West. Great job to use Moron as a, as a decoy on that play, which uh, had the linebackers make kick the middle, and that's in fact where they ran right up the gut for a ninja run of about six, but we do have a flag. All right, let's wait for the call. It should be coming right up. And is this going to be the first flag on, on uh, West Central East, Pablo? Well, they have, I think they've had one penalty. I think it's about their second or third. They're trying to work it out. I think we got the call. Some some penalty, some ten yard penalty. We got the call from the ref. We got a face mask call from Martin Torres up here. Face mask. Martin making the call. Yes, sir. Martin making the call. Cast TV in the house. All right. All right. Jack of all trades. Update on the Jaguars. Third, Jaguars. third quarter. They were up 14-0. Now they're down 19-14. That's a mission, uh, I mean, sorry, PSDA Wolverines up on the economy. This Jaguars, 19-14, left in the third. First and Lucio Road. If you're traveling north, ladies and gentlemen, of course, we like to joke around. We like to equate miles to yards, so it's first and 22. Is that penalty hurt? They got three running backs in the backfield with Maroon. And by motion, turning to the twins right. And Marone in the play action keeper. But great job by the Cougars to turn the run inside. A great, great defensive stand. A great job by that by, by uh, side. And a game of no more than four. Picked up four yards on the play. So call it second. And uh, I'm going to say 22. I believe it's going to be 18. So yes, sir. We're gonna, they're gonna, 67, second and 67. Well, second second and 17 there coming you go. up. <laughs> Messing around with people on the scoreboard. All right, second and 17 coming up. We're down to 730, ladies and gentlemen. Left in this game, it's still the Westaco East Wildcats 21. Edinburgh North Cougars 14. A lot of game left. Westaco content with grinding out this clock. Marone in the backfield. Again, Marone de is a decoy. They run the gun. He's still on his feet. The fullback, the fullback Ryan, Ryan Novato, goes right at the cut. Need a 17, picked up 19. They're going to move the whole chain. On a nifty run right up the gut by Novato. They used uh, Marone as a decoy again. Marone took outside as if it was going to be a sweep, which caused the linebackers to, you know, vacate the middle. Bam, right up the gut. There you go. And run the clock. 
No, what's the coach content with running that clock? So the Cougars have got to do something. What do you do, Donut? Do you attack the middle, then they go outside with Maroon? Do you attack the outside, then they go right up the middle? I attack number seven. I, I would I would just put more people in the box and force them to throw because they don't want to do that because of the clock. All right, here we go. First 10 10, ball at the 27 yard line. And they, in fact, have more people in the box. They go right up the gut as the coaches heard the call. And uh, this time I run right up the middle, but this time only a gain of two and a half. All right, Bottle, you're in field goal range maybe here. If we can get another eight, seven yards, and that'll be big, a big three points if well, they can get it. Maybe not because they have their backup kicker in. I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm not sure how comfortable they are with the backup kicker, but um, un it's unfortunate that he got hurt. But it is fortunate for the Cougars in that their uh, special teams are a little bit, have a little bit of air out of their tires. All right, here we go. It's going to be second and eight coming up. Six, 25 and counting left in this ball game. What's the go at the 25-yard line of the Cougars? Fumble! 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 And the Cougars have got it. Fumble! 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 This had a snap. This had a snap by the quarterback, Rivas, and the Cougars were quick to jump on it. And the Cougars are back in life. Back to life. Back to life. Back in. That's a song. Back in life. You got that song, Leo? Back to reality. <laughs> so it's going to be first and 10. Edinburgh North Cougar football. And Paulo. Yep, so. This might be their last chance. That's right. This might be their last chance. They, uh, great job for the defense to come up with a full recovery. And the Cougars, if you're, if you're the Cougars, and you get a chance to get this ball, you hope you do something with it. All right. Cougars so, have twins left, twins right. Rodriguez, Rodriguez in the backfield with white sides on his left hip. The snap is up. It's going to be a pass. He's got plenty of time. He's got, he's got a man open in the middle. And that's going to be an illegal hit. Yes. That is not a good hit. That is a hit on a defensive player. He lowered his head. That's going to be easily five free yards as the safety lowered the crown of his head and hit a defensive player. We talked about earlier. That, that, should, that shouldn't happen anymore in modern day football. All right, it's probably going to be a 15 yarder. We'll wait and see. And Pablo. Give us Believe it or not, that's going to be the first flag of the night was for the Wildcats. But it might be the biggest one of the game. We'll wait and see what's going to happen. We're waiting for the call. I'm pretty sure here comes the call. It's going to be personal foul That's right. against the Wildcats. So ball from the 31 will go to the 46 yard line, a pickup of 15 yards on that flag. And after the uh, – after the the uh, it was over. 15, 30, after the the Cougars have been flagged all night long for over 80 yards. No, it's going to be the first one, and it'll put the ball at the 46 yard line. First and 10 for the Cougars with 6:10 left. It's the Cougars getting a big first down. So we're going to move those chains. First and 10, ball at the 46. Timeout. We have a timeout. Official timeout. They still have a football yeah. on the field. Let's go in a cover three, which means that both the corners and the middle free safety responsible for anything deep. So the void, the vulnerable spot, is anything a short pass to the left or the right, don't it? I'm sure the Cougars know that as the Wesico is in a cover three. All right, Cougars right. Which one's right? Shotgun for Rodriguez. It's going to be a run. He's going to keep it himself. Whiteside makes a block on the linebacker. He's still on his feet. And he is going to rumble and bumble for 11. And they need a 10. Move those chains. All after picking up only two first downs, one on each of the first two uh, possessions of the second half. Boy, Leo Reyes moving the chains. Leo Reyes. And it's a snap, a quick count. Give me another quarterback keeper. But this time a bad snap delayed. The, uh, Pick up four yards anyway. One, two, three, four. Call it four. Second and six coming up. Ball quickly at the 39. Pablo was looking down, writing down something, and you started calling the play. Yes, sir. That was a quick snap, man. Eh? Very quick, yes. As the Cougars are doing everything they can to try to catch Wesco off guard. Twins left. Twins right. Five and a half left on the clock. Rodriguez in the shotgun with white sides. White sides on the left hip. If you're Wesco is strong right. As Wesco is coming up into the box. They're ready for the run. And there you go. You can see it up here, ladies and gentlemen. You can see it up here, ladies and gentlemen. What's it was in a very run-heavy defense. They took a chance, don't it? It was a right call that they did run it and a no game. All right, two down territory, Pablo. You got to get something here, Pablo. 
Well, we'll see. Go for the big play. Yeah, that, and then I, I would agree they're probably going to go for it. We'll see what happens here as Wesco took a chance. And I'm staring at their secondary, and they are very close. Don't it? Go, go for it. They are vulnerable to the pass. And it is in fact a play action pass. He got a man open deep. If he makes the kick, way overthrown. Completely overthrown. They did a crossing route. And the quarterback made the wrong decision. He threw to a covered man, but it severely overthrew him. It was the right time to throw the ball. And Wesico had uh, too many men in the box, but overthrown. That made it incomplete. Fourth and seven, and I'm sure they're going to go for it. All right, fourth and seven, 447 left in the game. It's still the, uh, what's it called, East Wildcats 21, Edmund North Cougars 14. Big play. Here we go. Maybe the ball game. Trips right. The fans are on their feet. Split left. You got man to man at the top. You got man to man at the top. They're going to blitz off the edge. Here comes the blitz. And they throw it down the middle. He's got a man wide open. open. Mm. Completely wide open as he overthrows him. And ladies and gentlemen, Wetzikow takes over with 442 up 21 14 in the fourth. Follow, I, I, I mean, I'm no quarterback, but you need to study the situation a little right there, not just throw it thinking he's going to be there. He had, he, had, he had no rush, he had all the time in the world, and both passes were thrown way too far. Nobody, nobody more upset than Rodriguez himself. You see him come off the sideline as he did overthrow his last two passes in a row and has given the ball to Wetzikow. All right, so it's going to be first and 10 for Wesico ball at the 40 yard line that is of the Wesico East Wildcats so with 442 left defense being asked one more time Safety, get up here do something here we go first and 10 442 left in the ball game and a Bible snap a, a mishandled snack by Rivas again it looks like he was able to get on the ball as the Cougars almost caught a break in a way they did because back to the no 40 gain. No, no gain it'll be second and 10 coming up uh, clock running under 435 30 seconds will be under four minutes left when they snap the ball Follow up again almost another break. Well, I mean the defense did their job the last time and uh, You know just the, you know, I think it was a good call the play calling by the Cougars They could have scored on both plays if he doesn't overthrow his man Nevertheless, they were incomplete. So it's gonna be what's the ball it is second and ten four ten and counting left in the ballgame Cougars looking at twins. Oh, oh, again. Again. Bobbles the ball again. And this time it is going to be a loss. What's the ref standing there for? This guy's got the spot. This guy's got the spot over there. Yeah, what's he over there for? I have no idea. But bring it back to the 39. The lost the one. It'll be third and 11 coming up. Uh, clock is running. We're down to 345 and counting. And I think Westico is going to use a timeout, but they're going to take that. No, they won't. 21 seconds, 20 seconds in the play clock. What's it going to send it in the play? Looks like the defense. No, they're going to call. They're going to use their timeout, Paul. They're, they're going to wait a little bit. They're talking about it. They're already talking to the ref. So it's going to be uh, eight seconds, about 320 left. It's going to be a third and 11 ball at their own 39 yard line. That's the Wildcats of Westico East. It'll be the Cougars coming up probably with their biggest defensive play of the game coming up right here, Pablo. And lucky for the Cougars as two times in a row, the Westico East quarterback, Rivas, was not able to field the snap cleanly and had to do all he could just to jump on the ball. Cougars will take that. Now, Pablo, has he been getting into the center much? He, no, he's been, he's been doing both. He's been, a, a, been doing a steady diet of both uh that he's been uh, off in the shotgun and under the center so uh nothing, nothing new. new to him tonight all right so with 320 left ladies and gentlemen once again in case you're just joining us i'm donald salinas ball off ready to my ride we have a timeout on the field and that is by westico east and uh did he just ask for another timeout or what Pablo? he's already given the sign they had already given it he's doing it again they still show one timeout. So not sure, not sure why he would call two timeouts in a row. I've done that before, don't it? But I actually let the play start, or the play clock, and I'll take a timeout at the very end of the play clock. I'll, I'll, I'll talk for another 30 seconds. Hey, Luciano, going out to Coach Salas. He says it sounds like a great game, man. It sure is, Coach Salas. 
Salas, former Edinburgh North quarterback, took him to a district championship and is now the head coach coordinator at Longoria. Coach Raul Salas doing a great job. Glad you're here. Hey, Coach Salas, how you doing, Coach Salas? Thanks for tuning in. Once again, 3.20 left, Coach. We have a third and 11 coming up. Ball at their own 30, 39-yard line. Here we go, defense. It's going to be a sweep to Maron, and the Cougars have taken care of it this time. And a tackle by Saul Garza, former Brewster Longhorns in the house. A pick up only one, so call it fourth and ten. The play clock has started, so the Cougars should be getting the ball, Pablo. With on a timeout. With, oh, they're going to get it with a lot of time left. Yeah, they want to stop the clock right now. Uh, they want to. They want to. Whoa, oh, the music! Follow the game below! Oh, I'm listening to the music right now, man! Timeout on the field. It'll be timeout number two for the Edinburgh North Cougar. They're down to one timeout. They will be getting the ball back at least with three minutes left. And which will probably be their last chance. Uh, we thought it was going to be the last time, but no ball. They, they came up big on the defense. And uh, after two minutes uh, snapped by the West Coast East, they'll be getting the ball back with at least three minutes left, if not close to three minutes left in the ball game. Pablo. This is clearly a great game. And the Cougars are about to get the ball with 312. So let's see what they come up with. They've, they tried throwing a few times, don't it, but they've severely overthrown the receivers. And they've done, they've done nothing but go deep, 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 as opposed to some short, you know, little deep, little here, little there. They've gone for the bomb. All right, you ready for some overtime? If they score, why not? All right, here we go. It's going to be fourth down, and it's what's it go East punting the ball. And there's your quick punt as Cougars inexplicably do not have anyone back to return the punt. All right. Cougars take over way back in their own territory. They're going to spot the ball the only ones, 14. The only ones that didn't know they were punting was the defensive coordinator. And the Cougars are going to take over. I say that with love, man. You're killing me, Pablo. You're killing me, man. I don't know why they have yet to feel the punt or even try to. And advantage Wetsico special teams for having no one field the punt. Well, we want some overtime, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to take about 86 yards for the Cougars to go in order to get into overtime. Right now, we're at 303 left in this ball game, and it's the Edinburgh North Cougars 14, the Wild Wildcats from Westaco East 21, 303 left, ball at the 14-yard line up the Cougars. Cougars trips left, foot right. Quarterback with a shotgun, and it's going to be a read option. And Whiteside's right at the cut. As he's still on his feet, he's on the 30, he's on the 40, and he gets knocked out at the 45. They need a 10, and they got about 30. So they're going to move those chains. Well, you want to get out of out of trouble by being at your own 14-yard line. Give it to Whiteside. Let him go right up to the far side of the field, to the side, got to the outside, and they got it a little bit more after he got hit. Went all the way down to the 45-yard line. First and 10 for the Edinburgh North Cougars. Down there at the 45. That's their own 45-yard line. 2.52. It stopped the clock. This time, a mishandled snap as Rodriguez takes it right to the gut and runs for about seven. Picked up eight. They're taking advantage of a very soft defense by what's it going? A little shout out. Our boy, my boy, Joey, Jeff, Bob, Mig. Boys hanging out doing the queue over there at Mig, Coach Alessandro's house. Right. Yeah, listen, I appreciate you guys. I'll be drinking some diet sodas with you guys in a little bit. Trip right, split left. Rodriguez asking for the ball. It's a high snap. He's the white sides. He's got some lead blockers, and he's up, runs up the cut. He needed three. They picked up about nine. So move those chains. Stop the clock. And they're grinding the they're clock. Stopping the clock to, to move the chains. It'll be first and ten for Edinburgh North Cougars. Quickly, they're at the 39-yard line of the uh, Westaco East Wildcats. We got a bunch of coaches listening. Coach Joey Zamora, head golf coach for the Cougars. You got Jeff Pena, swim coach for Conimini's, Bob Carasales at Longoria and Mick De Los Santos Golf Course for the Sabercats. Glad you guys are here. It's a long pass. He, he throws it up in the air. It's up for grabs. And it is oh, It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And he makes an unbelievable grab. We he took it away from the defender. It's going to be intercepted. Yeah, replay. And he just took it. A great ball oh, catch. God, they did Michael Cantu basically took, stole the wallet from the defensive back. We thought it was going to be an interception. We're going to touchdown. 
All right, after that, so we're going to get a replay. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to see this. I thought the game was going to be over on an interception, and he just, I don't know how, he took the ball away from the defender. Everybody thought it was picked off. They stood around. He came up with the ball and went, I guess, about maybe 9 or 11 yards after coming up with the ball. Here we go. Here's the extra point. Very important next to kick. Very important next to kick. It's a good hold. And the kick looks good from here. And it's a falling Cougars. We have ourselves a tie game, boys. There's a replay, Pablo. And we didn't quite get it, but I'll tell you what. Donut, you explained it perfectly. We thought it was going to be a pick. And somehow, here it is, here it is, different angle. There it is, there it is. Cats TV doing a great job. Somehow, some way, Michael Cantu, defender standing there just looking at him. He took his wallet and his watch from him and went into the end zone. Without even knowing. We got some rush. Whoa! <laughs> that don't fire up the cover. Nothing will right there, baby. All right, here we go. They say make some noise. So with 159, ladies and gentlemen, left here at Edinburgh Cat Stadium. I'm Donald Salinas. I got Paul Osbury to my right. And we got ourselves a brand new game. It is now Edinburgh North Cougars 21, Westico East Wildcats 21. We got to tell the ball game, ladies and gentlemen. 21, 21, as you said. Paulo, you go deep, kick it deep. The side stuff is not winning. So I'm going to say, well, I, 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 I agree, do not give it to Marone, okay? Either kick it away from him or kick it, kick it short, but don't. Kick it out of bounds. Por favor. Because they have Marone and the other tailback, uh, Cervantes, both of them dangerous. Marone, the more dangerous of the two. 445 left at Sherryland. TD Robert, uh, Robert Vela Sabercats. 27 24 with 445 left in the game. And here comes the kick, and in it back is very. Sh and they're going to kick it to Cervantes, the lesser. And. And he is, he is absolutely met. Special team play, good job. John Guajardo, and he makes a very solid tackle on the 26 yard line, under two minutes left. All right, we're at 154 left, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, the Cougars got the ball with 303 left in the game. Quickly, they went cold distance from their own 14 yeah. right down the field on a big pass play. So now it's going to be a uh, first and 10 for Westaco East. They're at their own 26-yard line. That was the music, boys. Pablo, do we play the little save and just go to overtime? I don't. I think they're going to continue on. They're going to. They're going to see what they can get. All right. See how this. See how this. See how this. Uh, you got to have a center fielder, Pablo. <laughs> Taking a chance, Cougars, and it's going to be a penalty. I don't think as they were. As a quarterback set. keeper, it looks to me as if Westaco is going to be content to go into overtime. Flags everywhere. As they're beginning to run the ball. Clock's going to stop with the penalty. All right. They'll stop the clock on the flag. 148 left, ladies and gentlemen. We have a flag offsides against the Cougars, man. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. I mean, I mean, oh my God. I give up. I give up. Uh, we need some more good luck. We need some good luck from Coach Joey Zamora. Help out your boys, your Cougars. All right, here we go. It's going to be first from the 26 to the 31, the five yards. It'll be a first and five coming up. And, well, I didn't even take that much time off the clock. And I don't think he's not going to start it, is he? We'll wait and see what they're going to do. We're down to one timeout each. Each team with one timeout. We have 148 left in his first and five for the Westaco East Wildcats. They're at their own 31 yard line. This one's left foot right. Shotgun this time. He's going to keep it himself. Wow, he can move. He's going to get out of bounds. I'll tell you what. This time the quarterback said, heck, heck with handing the ball. How about we just snap him the ball? Moron on his own sweep, keeper to the right, down the sideline for a first down, and they're going to move those chains. Pablo, I mean, you know what they're going to do. He's in the. He's in the shotgun. They're gonna give the ball. It's either he's gonna run left or right. That's it. Was your outside guy? You say he cannot. Yeah, yeah they, they got. He, they did not secure the edge. The force player or the guy who's responsible for turning the play inside, non-existent. Number one. Got the first down and stopped the clock. And stopped the clock. So 141 left, ladies and gentlemen. It is now first and ten. Quickly now the ball at the 38-yard line of the Wildcats. We have 141 left. Again, we're tied. And we're going to 21. Wildcats 21. There goes a run to the outside. They cut it back in. He cut it back inside. 
And he gets to the 45 of the Edinburgh North Cougar. Another first down, don't it? And they're going to move those chains. And a quarterback keeper on the right side. A lot of time left still. Did he stay in bounds, don't it? Let me see. They're going to run it? Yes, they are going to run it. Here we go. Run the clock. As they did stay in bounds, but they're in Cougar territory. Minute and a half. The run is in the shotgun. Now he's going to pass it. I'm going to take a wild guess. He's going to run the ball. No matter pass. which side, to the right or the left. And he's going to go right to gut. And he's got some room. And he's tackled after about a nine-yard gain. A steady dose of Maroon. A run for nine yards. Does he have a pass in him? Remember, who's hurt? The kicker? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Second and one. Call it. We're under one minute left, ladies and gentlemen. We're tying it up at 21. It's Edinburgh North Cougars 21. What's the go? He's Wildcats 21. Don't let him get outside. And they're a great job this time by the Cougars. The outside linebacker this Stop time. Stop the clock. He took care of contain. And what, they were not able to turn the run. It was third, second, and one bottom. Got him back to a third and six. Coming yeah, up. defense, let's go, baby. Third and six coming up. Here we go. 49 seconds left. We have a third and six ball at the 41-yard line of the Edinburgh North Cougars. It's supposed to go east with the football. We have a we have a new good luck call. You know, that's 24, that's 24. I see. Bobcats, we have Georgia Mono, Georgia Mono, Georgia Mono. All right, here we go. Third and six coming up for Wessico East. And the snap is up. It's going to be a quick pass. Oh, oh. catch it. Did he catch it? He did catch the ball. He short. And he fell short of the first down. Decision time for Wessico on a fourth and one. We know he's going to run it. Well, they're, they're apparently they're, they don't have, they're letting the clock run off. Number seven's going to run it. The Wessico is letting the clock run off. Watch the quarterback. Taking way too much time. Everybody watch everything. The snap is up. The quarterback keeper. And he's got some room. For a first down, which means you're going to stop the clock momentarily, and they're going to move those chains. Big pickup went down to 23 seconds. I'm sure they're going to spike the ball, Pablo, or just run a play? Looks like they're ready to run a play. Just waiting for All right, we got 23, start the clock. They may go throw it so they can stop the clock until they complete. And they air it up down the sideline. He's got a man. Oh, a good defense. He will give credit. Give credit to John Mendoza for breaking up the pass in the corner position. Incomplete. Stop the clock. Why didn't they run the clock, Pablo? Here we go. It's going to be second and ten. He ran for a first down. Here we go. Second and ten coming up. Ball at the 27. You're looking at a 47 yarder and the kick is hurt. So it's going to be what's it going? He's going for it. 17 seconds left. Expect a play to the sideline. Oh, 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 and the quarterback is running around. And he is going to be dropped short as the ball was mishandled. Expect a timeout from Wetsuko. As again, it looked to be a good snap, but the quarterback did not field it cleanly. How long? Over and the Cougars. George Amaro, George Amaro, George Amaro. Catch a lucky break. Seven seconds left, ladies and gentlemen. It'll be a third. And call it on 17 coming up for the Wildcats. Ball at the 33 yard line. Uh, the kicking game is not up to par. So, Pablo, you've got to have, you better have one or two center fielders. And you better be ready for a trick play or something because uh, Westaco East might be down to their last play. In overtime, Cougars are one and one. Ex I would expect a pass down the sideline, don't it? So if it's not complete, the clock stops. If it's complete, he's able to get out of bounds. So I would expect something down the sideline, maybe a quarterback sprint out to the rollout to either the right or the left. But uh, well, I'm sure West Coast is aware they have no timeouts. We gotta send the sides, eh, Pablo? You gotta what? Send somebody. Don't let nobody get to the outside on a run. Don't certainly if it's a run. Don't let them get out of bounds. All right, here we go. Seven seconds left, ladies and gentlemen. We're at Edinburgh Cat Stadium. I'm Donald Salinas. Paul Oliver to my right. We have a game right here. First ever 6A football game in history here at Edinburgh Cat Stadium. It is the uh, Cougars 21, Wildcats 21. It's going to be a pass just like the other side. He's got a man open in the middle. If he catches the ball. And he was open, ladies and gentlemen, and it was underthrown. And it took the whole seven seconds. So, ladies and overtime. gentlemen, we're going to overtime at the Edinburgh Cat Stadium. Wow, Pablo. He was open. Uh, the quarterback underthrew him. You got to 
I mean, to me, you got to go momentum and bring North Cougars right now. Oh. Flex Abbott. No. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we're going to keep it coming, time. At Edinburgh Cat Stadium, I'm going at Selena. We thought we were getting out of here early. No, we're not. We got overtime at Edinburgh Cat Stadium. Once again, I'm Donut Selena. To my right, Paul Osbury. Special thanks going out to Cats TV 17. That is K-A-T-S Channel 17. And of course, VanHalen.com. We got some Van Halen playing on the board. Might as well. Joe, deflect that pass. Panama. No, jump. Might as well. Jump. All right, here we go. They, they decided already. Oh, look down there. We got someone waving at us. No, look down there. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? David Torres. David Torres. Torres. Board member. Yeah, David Torres. Where's Celia? She was down there waving at us. Miss Avila. Where's yeah. Avila? No way. There, there, no way. She's about to sit down in front of the Hey, Miss Avila. Hey, Miss right. Avila. Yes. You know what? She, she's <laughs> battling cancer powder. Yeah, she's and she saw so much, so many football games. Last year, the Cougars had, I believe, uh, six Thursday games. She didn't miss not one of them. So special thanks going out to Catch TV and of course ReadyCenter.com and ourselves from Miss Avila. She tells me all the time. Hey, I couldn't ask for a better time to have a lot of Thursday games for the Cougars.